to have our ministry defined for us by Jesus Christ and in order for Jesus Christ to be the basis for our life in this realm it all comes from the ability of the move of the remage and our connection to it it is not explicitly stated it is implied that you understand from the beginning of the verse that since we are experiencing the glory of God and the brilliant radiance of Jesus Christ in his spiritual connection that since we are in that realm that it can only be since we are in submission continually to Jesus Christ it is assumed that you understand that the way that we can be sustained in the abundant life is only through a spiritual connection with the ability of the move that already took place in the remage who's here if you want to be sustained in the glory of Jesus Christ even intermittently and for milliseconds you can only be sustained in the glory of Jesus Christ if you are connected to the ability of the move of the remage that is what Hebrews 1 3 says without any shadow of any doubt who is still here brother Sam I have a question for you how can we be in connection with or how can we have a connection with the entire spiritual way through a connection with one single Rima walk simple because it is a collateral sequence and there is a piece of each work in all the other works and the fact that all the other works are interrelated and interdependent the fact that Christ did create us in the spiritual ages as a spiritual creation is not enough in itself the fact that Jesus Christ did something on the other side is not enough in itself you need to be connected to what he did with regards or pertaining to your own spiritual creation on the other side you must have knowledge of it and you must be connected to it in order for you to be sustained in the glory of Jesus Christ the fact that Jesus died on the cross it's not enough to save you you have to apply yourself to that crucifixion by understanding what that means in spiritual terms on the other side if you are to be saved you need to apply yourselves to the blood of Jesus Christ which is a shadow for this spiritual work and the loss of his glory if you want to know what your deliverance and salvation is all about let me just bring you up to date the fact that Christ did create us in the spiritual ages is not enough the fact that you are a son is not enough because you need to know that you are a son and you need to know what type of son you are not defined by your imagination but defined by Jesus Christ in this spiritual communication that I have been describing to you since John 1 12 it is our response to what Jesus shows us that allows us to have this abundant life and I assume that we are all smart enough even in our natural selves to know that there is something lacking in our life and that we need the abundant life we must have access to the knowledge of the fact of our spiritual creation by the declaration 
And that's not enough in itself. We must be connected to this fact for an experience if Christ is really to become our foundation for our life in this realm. It's very important that you understand that what we really want is for Christ to become our foundation as we live a life in this realm. I wonder if you're with me. If you build your life in this realm on anything other than Jesus Christ, you're building your life on shifting sand. Amen. To put it in very popular terms, in, in, in form even of a slogan. What we want is to build our house on the rock which is Christ. So when the storm comes, we would not be shaken or changed, but we would be on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. And that house that we build on this rock, Jesus, is our life that we live in our same course through our connection to the spiritual way. To build your... I wonder if you're with me. Amen. What we entrust in is to build a house. What is this house? This house is our life. And the fact of our experiencing what Jesus did in order to create us as spiritual creations, which he did before the material creation. It is our connection to the ability of Christ in the move of the spiritual ages that allows Christ to be our foundation and to support and sustain us in this abundant life outside of Christ. What I'm saying to you is outside of Christ and outside of a spiritual connection to the things that pertain to you on the other side outside of that realm you're lost you don't have life abundant and you're in lack. Who is here with Brother Sam? Amen. We need to look at the second part of the verse, please. When he had by himself purged our sins, taking that section in isolation from the rest. I want you to look at the word that is translated as purged. 25 12, along with the word 4160. 4160 is to qualify or to do. Look at that first, please, in Strong's. To make or do. Poeo. And then turn to 2512. Catharismos. Who sees 25.12 in Strong's on page 38? A washing of ablution, moral expiation. It's related to or from 25.11, which is Catharizo. To cleanse. And it's from 25.13, which is clean. I want you to see that. Have you seen it? Twenty-five twelve is Catharismos from twenty-five eleven Catharizo to cleanse. So twenty-five twelve is a washing off, an ablution, a cleansing of the body in a religious ceremony, symbolic, the liquid used in an ablution. Catharismos is also said by Strong's to be moral expiation. Do you remember that? 
which is the act or means of atonement. Where atonement is reconciliation, having had our wrongs set right, having been reconciled and harmonized with God, to be in agreement with God. How does this happen? How are we cleansed? Cleansed is just a shadow of this deeper meaning to be morally expiated. Who is with me? To have our wrongs set right. It's not about washing away. It's about having our wrongs set right, of having this atonement and reconciliation. The fact is, how does this come about? How is it that our wrongs are set right? Because we exist in a physical condition and we exist in a state of lack. And how is that made right? How we reconciled with the Father and how we harmonize with God? The answer is the same to the former question. By the ability of the move of the Rima. That is how it's done. It's all in here. It's all the same thing. By the ability of the move of the Rima. In the King James Version, by the word of his power. And our connection to this move, when Christ becomes our foundation and sustains us in life, since he will show us the glory when he is our foundation and we have our access to it, when we are functioning in the body in ministry, and this is how Christ cleanses our sin. What is our sin? Look at 266. In the lexical aids, please. Missing the true goal and scope of life. Offense in relation to God with emphasis on the resulting guilt. The fact is that we do know when we're guilty. It's not our conscience it's something over and above our conscience that says to us that we know we're in lack. That we know we're missing the scope and the goal of life. That we know we're missing life abundant. What is hamartia? What is this sin? This sin of not being a supplanted vessel. What does it mean? It means simply to be falling short of the glory of God. It means that you don't have access to this connection with Jesus Christ and the glory. Who's here? If you are not in ministry, if you are not expressing physically the things that Jesus Christ shows us that we need to submit to, if you are not expressing them physically, then you don't have access to the spiritual works. That is what it indicates. And if you don't have access to the spiritual works of the other side, you don't have access to Jesus Christ and you're missing the glory. The fact of existing in sin is not the fact of not working the physical expression. It's not the fact of not being connected to Jesus Christ is the fact of missing the glory of God in Jesus Christ. It is that fact. That is the, the emphasis of missing the scope and the goal of life, which is the abundant life, which is participating in the glory of God even as we exist on this side. I don't want to lose you, my brothers. I want you to stay with me.
What is it to be in the state of sin? Hamartia. It is falling short of the glory of God. The fact that you are not connected to the glory of God. It's not referring to the spiritual work that Christ did. Because Christ is the one who did it. It's not about not doing the physical expression because it means nothing to God. It's about the fact that we don't have access to the glory of God. And once we are falling short of that, we are in sin. Just so you get a little more understanding on this, please turn with me to Romans. Romans 3 and 23. What do you see? What God requires is to take our oppression from us. He wants to give us abundant life. He wants to give us a life where we participate in the fullness of who God is, which is the glory of God. He wants us to participate in the righteousness, the rightness, the uprightness, the perfection. Everything that is excellent that exists on the other side. He wants us to participate in it. Once we exist in a state that is short of this glory, then we are in a state of hamartia, which is falling short of the glory of God. We are missing the true scope and goal of life, which is that we exist even in this realm in the perfection of who God is. Who is here with me still? I'm still in Hebrews 1 and 3, please. The question is, if you look at that last section in verse 3, by himself purged our sins. That Jesus, in fact, not cleansed us, which is only a shadow, but rather that he heals us by a reversal of nature from our falling short of this glory if we submit to what he shows us 
And this submission is not what God is looking for. What God is looking for is to make us complete in Him. He doesn't need us to be connected to Him because it is suffering to Him. It costs Him to be connected to us. All God has His mind fixed on is of our own deliverance from this physical condition. That is what he's looking at. The question is, how does Christ cleanse us from our sin? How does Christ heal us from our falling short of the glory of God? How does Christ heal us from our missing the true scope and goal of life? Notice, if you go back to 266 for a minute, you'll see it says, with emphasis on the resulting guilt, the fact that you are not in connection with this glory makes you feel guilty because you know that there is lack in your life. God as well desires to rid you of that guilt. He desires to rid you of the guilt. Now, how does this happen? Is it by any mystery that we cannot understand? No, it is simply by Jesus Christ connecting us to our individual spiritual way. In other words, it is by Jesus Christ connecting us to that part of the move that took place in the remage that pertains to our individual spiritual creation. In other words, God created me back then and I need to be connected to it if I want to be healed from my lack, if I desire to be healed from my falling short, I need to submit to Jesus Christ so that I can be connected to Him and to the spiritual that pertains to my spiritual creation. Full stop. Who is still here, my brothers? What am I saying? One of the things that I am saying to you is that if you want to escape from your lack, if you desire to get away from this fact of oppression, then what you have to do is you must see Christ. Because I know that He has revealed Himself to you and some of you have rejected Him. It is because of that rejection that you don't have access to the glory of God in Jesus Christ. It is why you are in your lack. It is why you are missing the true goal and scope of what God calls life. You need to see Christ afresh so that your focus would be off the physical things and on the things above. With some of us, it is a fact that we are not seeking Christ, that our focus is off. You are seeking to fulfill the loss of your flesh. You are driven to see how you can fulfill the things that you desire, which are physical, and therefore your focus is off. Your focus needs to come back on the true essence that will give you life, which is Christ. And when He reveals Himself to you, since you are seeking Him, that you must submit to what He shows you, that you can only escape from your lack and from the loss of your flesh, which are controlling you, if you seek Christ. And when you seek Him, and He shows Himself to you, that you submit to what He shows you. Otherwise, you will not escape from your lack. You will not escape from the loss of your flesh, which are controlling you, because your mind tells you, that it is these very things that you lost after that is going to give you life. 